you repeat that, what you said? Perry County, Criminal District Attorney's Office. Protective Order Unit, this is Keandria. How may I assist you? Yes, I'd like to know um, for stalking, how you can assist people. What exactly is the process? Okay. Um, can you hold just a second? Okay. Criminal District Attorney and Protective Order. I'm currently unavailable. Immediate this is just a random call. They don't want to talk to me. She put me on hold. This has happened years. They don't up any information anywhere. Criminal District Attorney's Office, please hold. I keep getting transferred to a voicemail. So I didn't say anything. All I did was say, can I uh, get information on, but this has happened years at multiple different locations. Third call. Yes, I keep getting transferred to a voicemail. Do you have any information at all on the process? May I ask your position? Ma'am, uh, ma'am, ma'am. I don't know how they're doing it, but they've been treating me like this for years. We listened to the Frank Crowley, how I've called in and what they were doing, forwarding me over to voicemails and playing games for years. And then when I came in in person, that was the location that pushed and shoved me and forced me to leave. Voicemail again. Where are you located? Hello. Where are you located? We're 200 East Weatherford Street. Okay. Um, I keep getting transferred over to a voicemail. I'd like education on the process. Okay. So if you leave a voicemail, one of the attorneys will give you a call back. Okay. I've already been through this uh, from uh, another location and my calls aren't getting returned properly. So, um... I've already left a voicemail. You can just leave a voicemail so she can call you back, okay? I've already left a voicemail. You've reached Marvina Robinson, Tarrant County Assistant Criminal District Attorney. Attorney's Office, Protective Order Unit. Yes, I just was, um, this, I got this number off a voicemail to call if I need immediate assistance. Hello? Hello? I hung up. Criminal District Attorney's Office, Protective Order Unit. Yes, I just was given this number. Well, this number was on a voicemail. Said it, and it said if you need immediate assistance, you can call. Okay. Hold on just a second, okay? Okay. It's not an accident. Years at multiple different locations all over the United States. We're talking about five years plus of games. This is how long I've been on hold this time, this call. So these locations don't want me to know the procedure because they're not following it. This is how long I've been on hold now. This is someone that has 20 something fossil risks. Two children taken away out of corruption. The middle child, the one they took away first, had no, um, they, I was a legal custodial parent, but they wouldn't do law enforcement for me to get my child back. They had to switch it up with the other one because they already played games with the uh, middle child. Um, then with the other one, they kept making mistakes. So they had to let um, the court, family court had to help them out by not giving me an attorney, even though I was indigent and, um, in the state of Texas, to my knowledge, when the, when it's custodial rights are at stake, you're supposed to have an attorney. That's the family code, but they didn't follow the family code. So there's a lot of different things going on that a multitude of parties are sabotaging assistance for. So she had me on hold all this time. And protective orders. I'm Years of unavailable. For immediate assistance, Games. you may call the protective orders main number 817-884-1623. That's what I just Thank called. You. And they don't call me back. Thank you for 
Yes, exactly. What do you do there? I saw your name on a page for protection orders with um, numbers. Okay. Um, well, we actually do have a lot of different programs. Let me get you over to our heirs department. They have all of our resources um, that they can give you. And also, if you have any questions, let them know. Okay? Is it a voicemail? No, no. It's, our, it's an heirs department. They just have all of our resources. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, exactly. What do you do there? How do you help families? We offer counseling services. That's all you do is offer counseling? Yes. What services were you needing? Okay. Do you mean counseling as an advocacy? And um, I don't know what you offer. Let me look at the okay. website because this has followed me for a long time. People not wanting me to know the services they offer. So let me look at the website. I'm sorry? I see you have crisis intervention, family services. What is crisis intervention? What does that consist of? Crisis intervention. Um, that might be through OCOK, so that's our sister partner, and that's uh, similar to CPS. Okay, I could uh, use assistance with that organization. Okay, would you like for me to provide you with their number? Okay, and for as ACH, what do you do there? Well, I have you we guys on the line. Services. We have a youth shelter. Uh, we have transitional living programs. Okay, well, my custody rights were taken out of corruption. And I'm trying to get assistance with legal advocacy and um, information on my rights because they've been getting away with it years, almost six years. So, so we don't provide that, but I can provide you with resources for, some, for legal um, advice. Okay. What are the resources? Yes. Uh, what's a good email address? Okay, I'm sorry, you're going to look through your research guide and compile resources and then send them over? Correct. For legal aids? Correct. Okay, I've already went through um, the legal aid of Northwest Texas and they've been denying service assistance for me for years. Multiple different cases. Okay. So that so wouldn't I'm be an option out of corruption. And exclude that one just to see what else we have. I'm sorry? I'm going to look through our resource guide and exclude that one and see what else we have. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. She gave me the number that I've, what I've been calling all morning for assistance. And not getting answers. Yes, I, uh, I believe I just spoke with you. I'm not quite sure. And I was asked for information on how um, to report corruption regarding my child custody rights and how to get assistance when there were false statements made to sabotage my rights as a parent. I don't get my calls returned, ma'am. Um, but I just want to know if they gave me the number to the protective order location. And how would they be able to assist me if my child custody rights were terminated out of corruption? Right, ma'am. I'm not going to know the answer to that. It, that is our heirs department. And like I said, right now, we're shorthanded. So just please, whenever I'm over to the voice launch and see the voice they'll get back to you as soon as they possibly can, okay? Sure. Okay. Referral Services Program at ACH Child Care. Hello. This is Disabled Car Victims Assistance. Please leave a message. Thank you. They don't call me back once again. I'm sorry. Can you... Is this Victim Assistance and Rape Crisis? Okay, I have a stalker, and I'm not. Uh, I want to know what kind of services you offer people. Uh, well, we offer counseling and help with housing and shelters. Okay, how do I get? I'm sorry. What are you looking for at the moment? All of that. How do I get started? Uh, counseling. Yes, the uh, housing and all that other stuff that you said you offer. Okay, and wh where are you located? In Hempfield Street and Fort Worth. What's the address? Um, 
Are you um, located where One Safe Place is located? Uh, yes. yes. Okay, that's why they gave me the criminal trespass, because there's so many things offered in that building, and they didn't want me having access okay. to get assistance. Okay. Um, right now I have a um, criminal trespass out of corruption, and I, internal affairs isn't calling me back. I'm, I've been doing complaints. So well, can you give me some information over the phone on what I could do if law enforcement is involved in my abuse? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. If law enforcement is involved in my domestic violence situation or stalking situation, if law enforcement is involved, what can I? What are options for me? Because law enforcement is denied at multiple different branches. I have been making multiple different know. reports, but I'm wanting to know the organization and how to get counseling. When police come and interrupt me getting assistance, even speaking with social workers, conversations in Duncanville, they interrupted the conversation. It would not leave. And you say, and you, say you, um, you were in one safe place. Is that correct? Yes, they came and interrupted me. Um, I think they put one safe place, one safe place staff up to sabotage and assistance. They did that in all domestic violence organizations that I get assistance with. All of it is sabotage. If they say they're going to help me, they eventually retract on services. So I'm just in the blue. I, I have no earthly idea about protocol. The, uh, you know, um, the my rights. Because I'm blacklisted from advocacy and assistance. And how about um, Safe Heaven? Have you talked to them? Yes. Um, what did I? Um, can you? Yes, Safe Haven was a problem too. They're not assisting okay. me. They're saying that they okay. do IPV, intimate person, intimate partner. And have you called um, LASA Legal Aid? You can talk to them and have free legal, legal advice. Okay. I just, I just, well, I just keep on doing this so people can see what I've experienced. The runaround, the hamster wheel, just the games for years to keep, you know, just to make sure I'm not going anywhere. Okay. I mean, I think it would be better for you if you first get the, this free legal advice and see what you can They're do. They're denying me legal um, advocacy that the um, legal aids don't help me. There's yeah. conspiracy to violate rights. That. Crimes I've included with my abuse. Mm -hmm. So multiple locations, I, the food stamps wouldn't help. Social Security wouldn't give me payments I was supposed to have. My bank lit fund uh, cover for funds getting stolen out of my account, uh, and would not at another time would not give me funds in my account in a crisis. My own bank that I banked at fifteen years. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I'm so sorry that you're going through this. Yeah, I think. You will need to have uh, a lawyer and, you know, um, have legal representation. On this. Well, yes, my legal, the legal representation is sabotage. But what I was calling about today is to get an advocate because advocates call the police department. You know, I don't want to have to go through this alone. I want to be like other women that can get assistance and advocacy. Okay, so what do you need an advocate for? The same re reason why all women in domestic violence can use advocates. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, I know that. But, I mean, I, if my domestic violence crisis involves law enforcement, and I have 20 different false arrests, taking my freedom out of corruption, that's extreme. Okay. For someone to let the police, um, multiple different police departments get away with this for so long with no consequences. And, and, I, and I understand, and I'm, and I'm sorry to go um, to this, but here at uh, but advocacy it's more in rape crisis more than domestic violence so you you can't give that you don't do safety plans or if you know that other organizations have sabotage assistance you can't assist in any way if i'm asking for assistance we do we we do we do um like i told you you come here into our office and we can plant that here if you come as I'm walking. Okay, well let me see what they're going to do if Internal Affairs is going to do anything about this criminal trespass they gave me out of mouth to keep me from assistance. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay.
Um, Hello, Fort, please. Yes, can I have the number of two internal affairs? Hello. It's not muted. Hello. Uh, can I have the number two? Sergeant Hernandez, my luck. Yes, I wanted to know what you decided out of those, um, the criminal trespasses. I was blacklisted from getting help in domestic violence. I've been blacklisted from years at all domestic violence organizations. Police come in erupt and sometimes with arrests and assaults. I don't know how okay. I hit the jackpot and got you again. I'm sorry? I don't know how I hit the jackpot and got you again. Well, I guess it's just both of our lucks. Um, but like I explained last time, it, it's it's it, there's nothing I can do, ma'am. Maybe Every there's something time. the feds can do. Because Absolutely this no. is going on long I'm enough. Right. That you, no right. one has a right. Police department does not have a right to interrupt me getting assistance to get out of a domestic violence crisis that they are involved in. They need charges along with the abuser if they want to be enlisted in it. And then you covering it up, tampering with evidence is a crime on yourself. Handling the case is a criminal offense. You saw that I had a, uh, if you pull the body cam footage, you saw that, that I had a report of where a guy pulled a gun on me and all that I experienced. And for them to d detain me, that's a false arrest. That's criminal. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I showed them um, a police report where someone put a gun up to my head, pulled the trigger. I had to have the audio um, footage, the sound to the incident occurring. And you allowing that and you're supposed to be eternal affairs makes you, uh, affairs makes you a conspirator in it. You don't no, know. Police department we, doesn't we have, have a right to repetitively it, over and exactly. over and over interrupt any help, even at church that I could possibly get. They need their consequences. Oh, yeah. If you're unhappy with my investigation, then I'm going to have to refer you to another office that oversees internal affairs. What is the office? Because they, the I office mean, police it, oversight. What's the number? It is 817-392-6535. And you said you had a chance to check out my YouTube channel? No, ma'am. I've not looked at your YouTube channel. Well, then that's tampering with evidence, sir. How in the world are you going to make a, uh, that's evidence? And that, like I said, that's a felony charge. Why would you not look at ev vital evidence in your investigation? That I'm aware of whatsoever. Yeah, you're aware of it. That's why you won't look at it. No. If someone no, has recorded evidence, why all of a sudden now does the police department deny um, you, you, social media, which has been used for evidence for years, to incriminate a lot of people? Why are you choosing now not to look at the evidence on my channel? Um, ma'am, that is not at all what is happening. If you haven't looked at it, how how can you make a statement? If you refuse the evidence and you hinder a case, that's a criminal offense, tampering with evidence. My YouTube no, channel is evidence. It is tampering with evidence. If I have evidence that I'm telling you about to look at and you refuse to look at it, that's a crime. Let's not no, sugarcoat no, anything actually, any longer. The first time you've ever actually mentioned a YouTube channel. Well, I mentioned it now. I things. thought I've mentioned it to you, but you have it now. Correct. But as far as I'm aware, well, I just it's think still not going to change the outcome of the investigation that I've already done for you. You're going to have to contact the other. The other well, that makes you, you. I'm just trying to establish the fact that people are controlled and they're conspirators in criminal activity, so they can finally get their charges. If you have evidence on a YouTube channel and you deny um, the uh, the evidence, that makes you t uh, the, uh, that is a criminal offense of tampering with evidence because you will not look not at the evidence. Tampering with evidence, no ma'am. How if I I'm giving you evidence and you won't take it? What is that? It is not tampering with evidence. Well, it, we're talking about the specific investigation that I did for you regarding your criminal trespasses. I can't investigate everything that you might believe could be a crime or that is happening. I can only look at the uh, the incident that you described to me when we talked several times a while ago. Well, sir, I just all I can do is just put it out there over and over and over again. I'm not happy living in a shelter. 
And then I've reached out to other shelters and I'm blacklisted and then they play games and won't let me. They want me in this one environment. This word, my caseworker, they, they're get paying uh, evictions for other people. The caseworker here says that they stopped doing it. So uh, on these controlled environments, I don't get proper service. So I've reached, like I said, I've tried to get moved to multiple different locations and it's sabotaged. I'm in controlled environments, blacklisted. I understand. Well, well, if like you understand that, the police department the shouldn't have blacklisted me and prevent okay. me from I, progressing in life. They need their consequences, interrupting at church, interrupting with social workers. I thought, isn't that color of law? So what is color of law? Can you tell me about that? When police no, abuse their power? Why all can I you can not? Do, all I can do for you right now is talk to you about the incidents that I've already looked at that we've talked about, okay? Other than that, if, if we're not... Well, I want to speak with that, someone else above you. you I want to speak with someone... I want on. to speak with someone else over you. Uh, call that telephone number. Yes, ma'am. They are the ones who oversee our office. Okay. Thank you. All right. Goodbye. And help you. Yes, um, I have been targeted by multiple different departments, and they have been blacklisted to me from help in a, a domestic abuses, a domestic abuse crisis. They're also enlisted, so they have police department has come to interrupt me at hotel stays, restaurants, catching the bus, and in other different areas. Um, oh. Speaking with victims advocates, speaking with um, they've been inter interrupted conversations, social workers. So I, I just okay. wanted to get something done. I'm sorry, what was your name? Erin. Okay, about police abusing their power to be a part of a domestic violence crisis. Conspirators. So my phone is hacked and I go to my providers and they come and they interrupt me reporting to the provider the crimes being committed on their network. They just come with their badges and guns, flash them and enforce crimes. And they've been getting away with it for years with no consequences. Multiple different departments. Okay, so we can. When was so? Have you dealt with Fort Worth Police Department? I have. Um, they came when I was released on false charges. I was in jail on false charges by trying to report um some criminal activity to keep me away from my children that's been unaddressed for years at CPS. The worker lied on me and said I tried to fight her. They didn't know I was reporting it, but I recorded it. So then they had to change it up and give me a gave me a criminal trespass. They kept me in jail in um. Maximum security wouldn't let me go to court. He didn't give me a judge or an attorney. Then when I was released on those false charges, they made sure I lost everything before they released me. Then they denied me my right to get my release papers because I never went to court. I don't know what happened. I didn't knew. I wasn't even sure if they gave me the charge because I never went to court. And they were going to release me without me even knowing if I had the charge. They were so crooked. But they told me that the charge was eventually dismissed, but refused to give me my release papers and then gave me threatened a criminal trespass to force me to leave without my release papers after I got released from jail on the false charges. OK, so. OK. So we can't. So anything that happened in a court. We I'm just speaking of what you can help with. The police department is the court is allowing the police department to wreck up charges with no consequences. People haven't had consequences for their criminal activity. Felonies are wrecking okay. up here and no one has so, had accountability for insanity. Okay. No. So this is what I'm saying is we can take complaints against a Fort Worth police officer, but we can't do anything about the court system because we don't we don't have the purview to work on complaints with the court. They have a totally different complaint system Okay, well, the court. Okay. Well, the uh, police department is abusing their power. When I was released, they came in and they called Metro PCS. I believe that they called. And then when I, I looked up the Metro PCS on my phone, they um, would not let me reactivate my phone service and then started an argument where I couldn't get a phone, uh, an another phone with another number. And then someone was already there to slander me. Uh, um, that they've had, it's um, not realistic, so I won't even talk about that. But someone was there threatening me and mistreating me, and I had to leave the Metro PCS. I, having a cell forward, phone for me is vital. Uh, no, this I believe uh, officer contacted this location to mistreat me like this and deny me um, purchase of a cell phone. Okay. So well, wait a minute. So let me tell you. That, let me tell you what they're doing. So then okay. I went to a hotel. Okay. The police came to two different hotels after I caught the bus there in schemes. The first hotel scheme, so I couldn't stay there. They had the door locked, and um, started an argument where I couldn't um, 
check out a room that was Hampton Inn Suites, I believe. And then I went to Holiday Inn Express, terrified. I booked the room online this time. And when I booked it online, she claimed she didn't see it and then told me to leave after I paid for the room. The police came. I called the police on her because it was getting late and I had been trying to get, um, I didn't know, I wasn't familiar with the Fort Worth area. So um, I called the police on the hotel because they've been getting away with it years. And then the police came, bullied me, and um, had her give me a criminal trespass at the hotel. Okay, when did this happen? That happened February 8th when I was released from jail on the false charges. September so, 8th, 2023? Right. Right. But I mean, multiple different departments do, does this. Uh, the Dallas location, police come and interrupt me getting help with assistance. Uh, police came and interrupted me and pushed and shoved me at a church in Fort Worth trying to get help over the phone. And then get okay. threatened a criminal trespass. And my, you know, that's, you know, rather unusual for me to be trying to get assistance in domestic violence and get bullied in the process, pushed and shoved and mistreated. Okay, so I can't. I can only handle a Fort Worth complaint. Oh I'm yes, I'm just giving you. I'm just letting you know the track record that it's a lot of police departments. I'm targeted, so maybe you okay. can forward this over to an investigator in uh, Fort Worth FBI. I'm just trying to inform you that it's a conspiracy of multiple different departments, not just Fort Worth. Some departments okay. have came and interrupted me catching the bus with arrest. When I wasn't recording, now I record my interaction with the police. Okay. And now, right now, my phone is um, hacked now, and I still have problems getting legal aid and assistance at multiple different locations. I believe I'm railroaded and blacklisted, and my help is sabotaged. And I've um, contacted the police department multiple times, and they're not responding. The detectives assigned to my case. I believe I know hindering the case is a crime and I believe that's what they're doing because they won't call okay. me back and get any feedback or do a proper investigation. Okay. Do you have any of those Fort Worth Police Department report numbers? I do. Share with me? Yes. Okay. Two, three, zero, zero, nine, two, six, eight, eight. Okay. Let me repeat that because I think I missed the number. Two, three, zero, zero. Nine two six eight eight. That's correct. Is that right? Okay, hold on just a second. And you said you've spoken with someone. Have you ever spoken with someone at IA before? What's IA? Internal Affairs. I'm sorry. Yes, Hernandez, and he's covering up for all the insanity. Is he a detective or a sergeant? Do you remember? Sergeant. Sergeant. Okay. Hold on just a second. Complaint from you. Um, we can do it one or two ways. If you want me to take it over the phone, it's a, it's a lengthy process because I'm going to ask you a whole lot of questions. Or you can make it online and I can send you the link directly to the complaint form. And so anything that you have, like police report numbers, videos, pictures, whatever you have, you can attach it to that to that form. It's, it's totally on you how you want to do it. I'm really not that technically savvy. Um, I can give you my YouTube YouTube channel, which is evidence, and uh, we can do it on the phone. Okay. Give me one second. Okay. Oh, I called the other day. No, I have uh, another one. Just one moment. Let me get that for you. The most recent report number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One, one moment. Yeah. yeah. So what's happening in the police department is getting involved and they're enforcing domestic abuse. I don't know if it's considered domestic abuse, but it's like a stalking. It was like a partner um, relationship. It was an online relationship. I did see the party a few times in person. And when I ended the online relationship, the police department lied on me and said I assaulted them and evaded arrest in Atasca. And all law enforcement I've came in contact with has been covering for dozens of crimes, probably like a hundred reports that I've made and the police department's covering for it. Cause I used to get threatened three or four times a day. I, it was terrifying to me. I got trapped on a train. The train driver locked some boys in as well as myself on the train while the boys threatened me. 
And there was nothing I can do because law enforcement, I reported to Lindsay and he told me to get off property after I told him I was threatened. Okay. And, and that's in Dallas. So I'm sorry. That's when, in Dallas. Oh, He's no. a dark police. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. just letting okay. you know the pattern of the police departments. I know you can only um, concentrate yeah. on Fort Worth police, but I just, I'm trying to uh, emphasize that but I'm I targeted. Can, I, but I can give you the complaint um, line just like mine for Dallas. And so you can file a complaint with Dallas. I've already done it and they covered for it. it. I don't know what's going on with my phone. The police come interrupt me reporting crimes to my provider. Because I don't really think all these people are crooked. I think something mm -hmm. suspicious is going on. Do you have a, Do you have any specific officers in mind that you have dealt with? Or, or by any chance? Uh, um, well, I can tell you that Parsley and Wilson came to interrupt me trying to do, get a protection order. That was Parsley? on. That's pretty... But um, all my protection orders have been interrupted, intercepted, even trying to hire an attorney to get one. They um, retract on legal representation, even with me trying to pay. So November 10th, I went to try to get a protection order in education, and they would not give it to me. And the police came and forced me to leave. Okay. And, and that was Fort Worth Police? Right. Okay. And that was Parsley and Wilson. Right. Did they give you a? Did they give you like a, a criminal trespass warning or something? They did. Today? They did. They did. Okay. How did you know? I'm asking. Because that's not normal to get a criminal trespass warning trying to flee from a domestic violence crisis that involves the police department and a multitude of other conspirators. Yeah. So they gave me uh, on the 9th, February 9th, that's when they gave me the criminal trespass at one safe place that I'm disputing. Because what they're doing is they're blacklisting me from any help to escape a domestic violence crisis. That's what they're doing under reps. Okay, hold on. And that was on February 9th. Do you remember who... Do you remember the officers that you dealt with that day? No, it's on my YouTube channel. Okay, that's right. That's right, you do have. What's that channel? K-E-Y. Okay, There's Kiana. multiple different... Kiana. Yes, Kiana Clark Peace. There's multiple cyberbullying sites. So you'll see my picture, black woman. Um, the other sites have different things on it. Okay. And I've reported those that I get cyberbullied and slandered and um, these people in the comments are calling and causing havoc in my life with different locations. But nothing's been done. What did Fort Worth do on 2-8-2023? Oh, look, I can't, I'm repeating it. They came to two, two different hotels and gave me criminal okay, trespasses to blacklist me from... Yes, and then okay. they came okay. and tried to give me a criminal trespass trying to get release papers because I was de deprived of my constitutional right to appear at court, didn't get an attorney or a judge. They kept me in j jail with time served so that I could lose my apartment and car and be in financial distress. They're also oh. sabotaging, I believe that they're also sabotaging my ability to get housing and to get out, um, get out of this controlled environment. The lady that is helping me at this environment that I'm in, she has paid mm -hmm. for a lot of people to get um, uh, for evictions, and she told me mm -hmm. that they no longer do it. I got an eviction because they wouldn't let me out of jail with time served. Okay. 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 And lost the car. You lost your car. Well, right. Okay. And I've tried to get legal representation to get, get lawsuit to sue these people for all this damage that they've caused in my life, and attorneys won't represent me. Yes. 10, yes. Since I was blacklisted from shelter, I just said that I was going because my life I wasn't safe. I did not want to go back to a tent that wasn't safe. I get gang stalked and all kind of other things happen to me. Um, so the evidence of that is the man putting the gun up to my head, pulling the trigger. Then um, that's what the police covered for and detained me when I got off camera footage and stopped recording and got away from witnesses. They detained me and told the location to give me a criminal trespass. But anyway, to make a long story short, um, I have been going to ho uh, hospitals to get off the streets. 
and not have to endure what I had in the past. So at um, JPS, they made multiple different false statements to cover up for the abuse that I've been experiencing from the government. So when I was at JPS, the social workers wouldn't help me there. They played games and they made multiple false statements in the psyche valves and different things that were um, a lot of documentation. Like I said, it was like multiple false statements that can be easily proven that's false statements. And that's what the JPS social workers did. Did, did four police ever come out for that for those incidences i did try to call the police because i had bought new clothes january Uh uh, february 9th i had on new clothes when i was detained and the police came to bully me and made me leave with the hospital clothes on they wouldn't let me dress out and they forced me to leave trying to get to the bottom of my missing clothes i had uh, new shoes they were really nice stylish clothes that i had on Okay. Was this the same day that the JPS social workers wouldn't help you in a um, falsified, like... The, the no, this is at multiple stuff. different... That's no. A different date? Okay. Okay. And ironically, the same lady that was at Salvation Army sabotaging assistance was were, now worked at JPS. And she remembered me and she said that I didn't get the housing because I went to the hospital. Well, Dallas police lied on me and said I was blocking traffic. And when I was sitting at a courtyard that was nowhere near traffic and came and um, handcuffed me and hauled me off. And she said, because of that, that's why I missed my housing. Someone is enforcing that I'm homeless and stay on the streets. That's the kind of, that's what you have to do for me because I, I, you know, I'm, I call, I get things done. So you would have to sabotage my life to keep me homeless. So I just bought a new phone because okay. my I have this cracked phone. It's been glitching. My phone's glitch, and then when I come go report it to my provider, the police come in and interrupt and force me to leave, and then give me criminal trespasses. So I just bought this new phone, okay. trying to get better, you know, because I had so many problems with this other phone, and it's uh-huh. glitching and malfunctioning too. A brand new phone. My phones I've had like thirty plus phones. And Uh they glitched and had had issues. They would cut off in emergencies. The data would cut off when I was looking up um, things like, let's say, looking up certain things about abuse and charges for government officials. When I'm doing Uh research and things like that, my data would cut off. My text would cut off if I'm texting, um, making, if it's in vital times, I wouldn't be able to send texts. So I keep reporting my phone's been hacked, but law enforcement will not investigate it. They keep covering for it. All departments I come in contact with. I made one over the phone. I don't know what happened to the report number. I thought I got one. Okay. Okay. Just one second. Right. The report number is when I spoke with someone over the phone. Okay. That's the same thing as speaking with them in person. Is it? Is it the same thing? I'm sorry. No, it's not. Um, Because when you speak with someone in person, they usually, like, give you the report number over... um, They usually give you, like, the report number on a a business card or, or a slip of paper or something like that. When you do it over the phone, you have to write it down. No. Um, okay. So, are you saying that it's better that I do reports in person? Either way, it's gonna be a report made. Is it's gonna be based on your preference, and if they're gonna have an officer that's available to come out to you. Well, for me, okay, for me, it hasn't been safe for me to, to speak with officers. They detain me, set say, me up. Then I would say over the phone would be better, okay. a better option for you. Yeah, that way you don't have to feel unsafe with them around or anything like that. Yes, because they've had the locations I've staying at um, put me out, give me criminal trespasses and force me to leave and different things of that sort. Okay, yeah. 
that, that would be my suggestion, just to continue doing them over the phone. Um, two different hotels, Hampton Inn and Holiday Inn. What happened at Hampton Inn? Hampton Inn, she just, they stage conflict. Okay. So they don't have to give me hotel rooms. In the past, they used to tell me the police told them not to check me out of room. But when I started recording, then they the hotels took the file for the police department. And they have the hotels take the um, blame for sabotaging me at hotel stays. But they used to, the hotels used to tell me up front, the police department told us to not to check you out of room. Okay. So, so then you went over to Holiday Inn Express. Where right. you can make the online reservation, right? right? Okay. And then she, her behavior was odd. And since this is a pattern for me of hotel, shelter being sabotaged, hotel stays, my own apartment. Since this is a pattern, I called the police on her. Because I paid for a room, had a confirmation number, and she told me to leave. Mm-hmm. Okay. That she didn't see it. So the why I'm reporting the police department is because I believe that they're um, enlisting civilians in their corruption and criminal activity. So when I went to a church, I started crying and I asked them to please help me. And they told me to get on the phone and call myself. This is what a lot of people are told to do and with, that are being controlled by the police department. To leave me, abandon me and not give, be a... Um, give me any love or support or compassion in my crisis. So nonetheless, I got on the phone and did it myself. Then they interrupted me on the phone, lied on me and said I was being abusive to her when in the place was sabotaging assistance. This is a church, blatantly lied. So the police department comes, push and shoves me, forcing me to leave and then tells me not to come back. I, I just a domestic violence crisis. I'm trying to free, flee. I told the church as well as the party that I spoke with on the phone. I was assaulted and arrested at a domestic violence support group. And then with the they are upset with me um, and slander me in the process. I guess they think it's okay for police to abuse their power and arrest someone for process. That incident occurred August 23rd at the church. Okay. You remember the name of the church? Yes, it is. Uh, it was Beautiful Feet. Beautiful Feet? Right. Okay. But this is a pattern. I was drug out of Ibach Church begging for my life. I don't know who did it. I really don't think church members did it. So they marched me out of the church, begging the congregation and the pastor for help. They marched me out of the church. I fell. They dragged my legs on the ground in front of multiple witnesses. On it should be on camera, or if the you know I don't know if it's on the church footage because they filmed their services. So they drug me out with my legs up, dragging on the ground all the way outside. It was the long way that they drug me out of the church because I fell, threw me down, slammed me down on the concrete. I was, uh, I didn't know if I, they were going to kill me at church, so I was glad to live through it. Then the police walked me to the, te- antagonized me, bullied me, and uh, was talking trash to me, walking all the way to the bus stop. And that was at Beautiful Feet or Ibach? Ibach. This is, I'm just showing you a pattern of abuse that I've had okay, to endure. Okay, okay. Uh, because I was putting that one in there. Ibach is in Dallas, right? It is. Okay. Yes, so I was drugged I was out of there and thrown on concrete at church. Complaint. Let me let me take that out because I was adding that to the full work. Oh, okay, no problem. I'm just trying to show that there. This is not. This is um, procedural. It's on purpose because a multitude of locations have done the same thing. Okay. I'm just showing you a pattern. No, February 9th, That was uh, one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you're correct. I was at one safe okay. place. And they okay. sabotaged assistance, lied about services they offered. And then the police came out the shadows because I believe that they're enlisting these places to do this. And then they detained me out of malice. They detained you that day? Yes. 
They did. They put me in the hospital. The hospital played games. The um, when I go to hospitals, I get threatened, and then the staff plays games with my uh, and won't take the reports that I've uh, uh, and won't give me proper social worker services. Okay. To flee the abuse that the police department is involved in, social workers won't advocate for me right or get, be honest about avenues to get help. A lot of times when you are um, discharged from the hotels, I thought that they had to give you shelter. That was a liability. So they'll put, they have put me out of the hospital on the streets because who someone is paying for me to be homeless. So they've released me from the hospital, which is into homelessness, which is a liability that's not following uh, hospital procedures. So right now, like I said, the reason why this is problematic to me, because I've called uh, all over trying to get out of this environment. I want to be in a domestic violence location where I can get education and, you know, um, they can help me with my phone being hacked, being forced to be away from my kids, someone uh, shutting down any support system I can get, law enforcement doing it. Well, see, I think that he's controlling the police department and okay. I, I have a okay. legal issue with my daughter um, where multiple conspirators have made false statements and committed crimes to keep me away from children. So each time I try to get legal aid, it, they retract or sabotaged. I've even tried to pay okay. an attorney and had issues and the attorney wouldn't let me pay them to represent me. So it's a lot of different crimes. Felonies have wrecked up and people don't seem to be getting the consequences for their crimes they're committing. Okay. Allegations against the police department, Fort, Fort Worth Police Department, abuse of power. Yes, uh, to railroad me. Civil rights. Yes. False reporting. What else? Am I missing something else? Um, the heck phone, cyber crimes, and using okay. the my devices to stalk me. Because how do they know each location to interrupt me getting help and get services at the uh, at church? How would they know to come to a church and drag me out of a church and then slam me down on concrete? How do they know at hotels when I'm calling on my phone, Addison police came out when I had called all morning on my phone and tried to um, set me up for mental illness, but I was recording, so they left. So then they came back and put the ho hotel up to slandering me and denied me my hotel stay that I had already paid for a week in advance. So can you imagine how that feels to be calling on the phone, afraid for your life, trying to get something done, to escape corrupt police, and they show up at, the, at your door and you haven't even called them? Oh, that it happened more than one time. Uh, I called the local Dallas location and she covered for crimes and um, they I called and spoke with Hernandez regarding him uh, covering for the mistreatment that I had from Fort Worth police and he said uh -huh. that I can go above his head which was you. Okay. So I reported a stalker and I reported my heck phone because I've had to endure this five years. My phone shutting off and all those things that I told you about. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to go another day and I had five years plus of my phone being hacked. They will not investigate it. So there's a red flag that is actually happening. Right. Do you have a when you were 
when you were making the report over the phone, were you at a business? Were you at a, where, where were you? Okay. You would actually have to send it to our email address. Um, that way I can get it. But here's the thing. So I want I want you to know, when we make our complaints with this department, our complaints do go to internal affairs. And what we do in this department, we review their investigation to make sure that they did a thorough investigation of your complaint. Okay. Um, we can't we can't discipline an officer because we don't have the power to. It would be up to that officer's chain of command to do that. Um, but we can send the complaint to Internal Affairs. We can review it, make sure that they pulled like all the footages. They've taken your footage into consideration, everything. And we will um, make sure that the investigation is a thorough investigation. Oh. I want to make sure you're okay with that because I know you're not as trusting of the police or anything like that, but we oversee their internal affairs investigation. Okay, so okay. if you see criminal activity when, uh, within the internal affairs, what is your obligation? Our obligation at that point is to report it higher to higher than um, internal affairs, which would go to the executive staff command, which is like the chief, deputy chief, those people. And they will be the ones that would have to impose any type of um, discipline or corrective actions if they in they do their own investigation and they see there's criminal um, misconduct or anything like that. Okay. Like I said, we can't discipline the officer because we don't have the power to. We have to push it back to them and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do in, in regards to their general orders, uh, their police personnel, uh, re- rules and regulations. Okay. So okay. we do we do have a, a mutual understanding that I'm um, stating that police are um, abusing their power to be a part of a domestic violence situation and interrupt any avenue I have to escape. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I've documented everything that you've given me um, for your report. Is there a telephone number that you want to be reached or do you just want to use your email address? Um, is this your cell number? Yes. Okay. okay. So the problem is, is I have two, supposedly two investigators that will not call me back. It, so it's, it, I'm like on a hamster wheel that's not going anywhere. So do you know, he, the, do you know their names, the investigators' names? Uh, let me get. And are they with Fort Worth? They are with Fort Worth. Okay. Okay. I think one of them is Mask, M-A-S-K. And then let me get the other one. He has a harder name. Just one second. Okay, Guadarrama. It's spelled G U. Okay. What is it? That is correct. Okay. So for years, all the detectives, all the uh, police cover for the stalker that I believe is behind. Like I said, I ended the online relationship and was assaulted and arrested. Not assaulted. Not this time. I was um, lied on. At um, with the task of police, they said I assaulted them and evaded arrest. It was a blatant lie that was on body cam footage. I wasn't even in the same room with them when they said I assaulted the officer. So anyway, um, the history is, is um, police not doing an investigation for all my reports. So I'm not. Uh, I'm still. My phone is still hacked, and I'm not getting my calls. My help is sabotaged, even at church. So I'm still in the crisis. I can't see my children out of corruption and malice. She witnessed my false arrest, screaming in terror, betrayed by the police department at age eight. She's now 14. There's priceless time that I'm missing out on because powerful people chose to take bribes and keep me away from my child for profit. So that these people don't rack up their felony charges, investigation is ignored and denied. So each avenue that I have for legal, I believe corrupt police or someone is sabotaging any ability I have to get legal. Because I've been pushed and shoved, forced to leave by um, security or police in the past. So now I believe that they're hiding behind the scenes like they were at one safe place. I don't understand how police, you know, can, 
have people enlist civilians off in their criminal activity and have do it for so long. Five years plus, yes. Okay. Multiple different departments. Officer Parsley, Officer Wilson, Investigator Mask, Investigator Guadabrama. Those are the that ones are the one. that I just have at hand right now. In the future, okay. I would be able to have get more names. Okay. And there's also, you can see it on my YouTube channel. No, he's trying to, he's saying that uh, police coming to one safe place and they saw the um, the police report I gave them showing that a gang stalker had put a, put a gun up to my head and pulled the trigger. As soon as I got away from cameras and witnesses, they detained me. They handcuffed me and detained me. They told me they were going to help me. And then in the hospital, the same, each location that I'm at, out in corruption, whether it's jail, I get mistreated there. I've been threatened multiple times at hospital stays, threatened multiple times in jail on false charges. Inmates conspire with crimes and lie and slander me to get me put in isolation, which is on camera footage, the blatant lies inmates have made. So just like I went to CPS and the security blatantly lied and said I was trying to fight her, inmates have done that in jail to get me put in isolation out of slander. So someone is abusing that much power to control hospital stays and even um, my jail stays. And I just had to endure it with no law enforcement. So, but in Hill County, they got caught. The police came and investigated jail staff for the um, mystery. I got it um, threatened multiple times by inmates there. And they put me in isolation, the jail staff, when I got threatened. This is they're, they're purposely setting up people to threaten me and then punish me for getting threatened. No, I don't. But I can get that later. I can call and get that and then give it to you later. Yeah, he's supposed to be investigating my hack phone. But police okay. won't investigate it because I think they're behind it. Okay. I have made dozens of reports, maybe like 30 or 40 reports that have has never been investigated. And when I go to my provider reporting that the police are behind my head phone, how to shut off in emergencies, and uh, 911 has uh, hung up in my face during a crisis when I'm getting threatened and covered for crimes that I was experiencing at the time, would not uh, send that dispatch out officers to cover up to conceal crimes. That was a red flag that something was amiss. I don't think all 911 operators are that crooked to where they cover for someone getting threatened in the background and hang up while that party's getting threatened. So I received a, uh, a message that something would happen on a certain day. So I walked to, I was forced to live in a tent because I was blacklisted from all shelter. So I walked out to my tent and saw a poisonous snake. I called 911. This was in Dallas to report it and they kept hanging up in my face. So I um, walked down the road and flagged down the officer and he wouldn't do anything either. It was a huge snake. It was a water moccasin, and that the that was in the city limits. It should not have been a water moccasin in that area. And someone watched me go walk to the tent from church. She came out, and it was odd. It was creepy. Because she looked at me. She hurried up and rushed out to church. It was a new party for, at this church. She rushed out to church with me and looked at me when I walked out to the church. And I uh, walked out to the tent. And then I saw the water moccasin. Wow. There was nothing I can do because um, the 911 kept hanging up and the police department would not help the one that I flagged, flagged, flagged down. I'm sorry. I get excited. I need to start calming down. But this has been a very traumatic experience that's been ignored by a multitude of parties.
what is that considered if an investigation is denied out of corruption? What are my rights and what would that be considered by law enforcement? If a police denies investigation to conceal crimes. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure because they'll be the ones that have to do the investigation itself. And as we're monitoring it, if it if it reaches that level, then it really takes me out of it. I was so I'm, I, don't I don't have I don't have court power or I don't have any court power. I don't have that. I'm sorry, I just don't have those. I powers. just wanted to know how get education yeah. on what is the criminal impl- impl- uh, implication. If police decide to abuse their power and deny investigation to conceal crimes, yeah, it's. I'm not certain of the implications as far as like consequences for that. I would assume that it would be just like anyone else if it was some type of um, criminal action that violate like state law, which would be held by like the district attorney's office and then maybe who you would have to contact in regards to like what kind of penalties what kind of sentencing um, what kind of punishments are related I'm being railroaded and they premeditate my movements and where I'm going to go and they give me criminal trespass to sabotage access to buildings vital buildings they've been getting away with it years I had a um, court case in Dallas at the Northern District Court and they kept coming to intimidate me, bully, mistreat me, took my bags, took my, sh- forced me to take my shoes off, all kinds of crazy things. It tried to scare me, telling me I was going to get arrested for trying to check on an active case. And I tried to um, inform the court that I would get bullied. The court said that I didn't come in in a proper amount of time, so they dropped the case. But I couldn't. I informed the court that I would get bullied trying to come in. And that was in Dallas? That was at the Northern District Court in Dallas, Texas. Off Commerce. Have you have you gotten a chance to speak with someone? Like an attorney? Uh, not an attorney, but someone at that Dallas court? The I police keep coming out of corruption to give me criminal trespasses to sabotage my access to buildings that are um, vital. That's why I'm making a report with you. I'm blacklisted and railroaded, highly blacklisted and controlled in Dallas. So that's why I'm reporting this to you because it needs to end in Fort Worth. Multiple different departments choose to tamper with evidence. Um, uh, What is it? Um, When uh, obstruct justice as well and they have not had any consequences for their behavior. Trying to make sure that I'm away from witnesses and the camera and then detain me reporting abuse. And then it's enlist the location to give me a criminal trespass so I can't come back in the future and get help. Pushing and shoving me at church trying to get help after I just cried to and begged for help from um, this church. Pushing and shoving me in Dallas too. Interrupted me speaking with attorneys. Tight conversations. I don't understand how they gotten away with it so long. they've been able to do this for all this time um the only thing i can do i can take the complaint and we can start working on it from the full order end unfortunately i can't make any guarantees about dallas because we don't handle anything in dallas well i would assume that if you if there it i would assume that people would do their job and if it's it crosses um i would assume that you would involve fbi the fbi Get the FBI on it if someone is being targeted in your jurisdiction and you have evidence that they're targeted in other areas as well. Why not inform the location, the um, the branch of law enforcement that can help with that? Well, so my department can only do things in Fort Worth. Like we don't involve FBI or anything like that. We don't involve other agencies. We can give you their information and maybe facilitate kind of bridge the gap there so that they can help but unfortunately our part of you doesn't extend outside of Fort Worth so there's like we can't do anything I don't have any jurisdiction to go outside of Fort Worth not even to the FBI or anything like that so if you're witnessing uh, police committing felonies and public corruption 
you don't report it to the FBI. You can't do that. What we do is take complaints from our community members, such as yourself, and we send that to internal affairs. And we monitor the internal affairs investigation. We don't have the authority or the jurisdiction to send it to the FBI. Well, the FBI has been denying me law enforcement too. I'm just building up a track uh, track record history of how I've been treated and these felonies that have been unaddressed that people have racked up for years. I'm just trying to build up a track record so something can be done. All I, I've just been on this hamster wheel for a long time and I'm just doing what I have to do to expose what, my, uh, what I've experienced. Yes, ma'am. And I understand. I understand. Of course, I'm just, I'm limited. There's a lot of things that I don't have my power. Yes, you know, no one has been able to for five years plus. No one has the, the DOJ hasn't been able to contact the FBI. No one, the police departments haven't been able to get get the FBI involved. Even at the FBI, they wouldn't get involved while I was there at FBI locations. Is that's obstructing justice? That's a crime. Okay, so in the meanwhile, how do I get in witness protection? That would be something that you would have to, unfortunately, you have to go through, like, the DA's office and, and all That's the why they gave me a criminal trespass. There's only ones that can do it. We can't, I can't get you anything like that. We only can review a complaint. We can't get any type of witness protection. We can't do do any of that we don't have the power to okay so uh and your recommendation is me, for me to go through the district attorney to get in witness protection yes ma'am they that, that would be my only suggestion you would have to contact like tarrant county da or maybe dallas the dallas county district attorney's office because unfortunately like i said i i don't have that i don't have any court powers i don't have any kind of power like that yeah, ma'am, I, I don't know where exactly what direction to go to because, I, like I said, the advocacy has been interrupted in case management and, you know, education. I'm getting blacklisted from every area that I can get help. So I don't know what to do because law enforcement is coming to interrupt it. Any help I can get, even with legal aid. And you, have you ever tried contact? Contacting Northwest Legal Aid? Yes, that's interrupted too. Um, in the past, I went through all these hoops and to get legal aid, and they denied every case that I tried to get. They played games, ducked and dodged me for a long time. And then when they finally got back to me, all the cases that they um, represent, they denied. They said it was too many people. But each location that I go through for legal aid, even in jail on false charges, I don't even have attorneys properly. They sabotage um attorneys for criminal cases when I'm in jail on false charges. So there's a lot of civil rights violations that have been ignored and that the FBI was refuses to investigate. And I believe that's obstruction of justice with them as well, as well as tampering with evidence. A lot of that has went around. That's still a felony, no matter how much it's done. Because well, um, a lot of the things, the things that you're asking for is just, I don't, I'm not versed in it because I don't, I don't work in those, in those staples. Um, so you've never heard of police denying someone investigation in law enforcement? Not on my end of it. The complaints that we usually get doesn't involve 
Keisha to this level or anything like that. It's the officer was rude or the officer uh, was discourteous. It's usually things like that. That's why all of this will have to go to internal affairs so they can decipher through the allegations and conduct their investigation that way. And we'll review the investigation, but like I said, we don't we don't have a way to discipline an officer. We don't have a way to take them to court. We don't have a way. We don't have a way to do any of that. We can only review the investigation. Okay, ma'am. Well, hopefully one day I can get off this hamster wheel and actually progress and people can get the charges. It, it shouldn't matter your position, power, income. A felony is a felony no matter who's committing it. And if people of power choose to abuse their power to this extreme level to pick on someone they feel is weaker or less has less power to intercept them trying to order food, just because you have the power to abuse. Keep them away from two children that they love dearly. Scare the other child into not being around their parent. Hit and runs that have been, been unaddressed. These are extreme events. I'm just giving you a, you know, a little insight on my experience and what people have gotten away with for years and nothing has been done. So, you know, I just put it out there in the atmosphere. I just, you know, think that people need to rack up the felonies that they've earned for themselves. If you choose to let someone disappear off the docket so they can't get their felony, then that makes you a conspirator in that crime. I'm speaking of the family court. Right, right, right. And then if the police chooses to come to each environment and give me a criminal trespass to conceal crimes to enforce criminal activity, that's still a consequence. They chose to do it, no matter how many parties chose to be a part of this. If you choose to have social workers and all domestic violence locations conspire with criminal activity with you, then you still suffer the consequences of using your badge and guns to do so. Then make, uh, the corrupt judges that cover for it and can help them conceal their criminal activity by denying me my constitutional right to go to court. Well, ma'am, all I can do is just keep putting it in the environment. I've been begging for my life for a long time. I don't choose to be homeless. And I've chose, I tried to get in multiple different environments and I'm railroaded and blacklisted and cannot get out this particular environment. I've called around and it's all shut down. And they're, like I said, they're playing games here with um, the help that they give other parties with evictions. So I don't know. You know, I, I'm trying to get out of this environment and can't. No, I, I, and I understand. I understand your frustration with it all. Um, like I said, I can, I'll definitely get this over to Internal Affairs so we can at least do our, our investigation review. And I mean, that's, uh, unfortunately, that's, that's what I can do. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay, and um, yes, yeah, so also, I don't can't think of the officer's name, but when I was released from JPS on the false charges, they t stole my clothes, my brand new clothes and shoes. So I do want that addressed because that's a lot of power that's abused to be um, as petty to steal someone's new clothes. And then force them out when they're trying to get their clothes and shoes. So I had to leave with no shoes because of the police department. And in the past, they would lose my all my clothing like they did then. I believe the police department was still in it. They would steal all my clothing, my driver's license, well, my uh, ID, um, social money funds I had on me, my card. So when they released me, they would talk these locations into releasing me into homelessness. So I would be on the streets fending for myself, scared. Not knowing that I'm blacklisted from help in all different places, the places that would help me, the police come and intercept it. So it was terrifying to be released and would, and they took all my, like I said, my clothes, my uh, ID, 
uh, cards, money. And Parkland never did give it back to me. And I tried to file um, suit against them and, um, you know, do things to have, hold them responsible for losing all my uh, items. And nothing was done. So I just think, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was just saying, I, I just updated more to the complaint with that portion of it. Right. So February 9th, they detained me. And then when they, when I was released after being detained, they stole my clothes and shoes. And then uh, here recently, they tried to steal my card again. And I, I um, kept writing, incriminating them. So they didn't. They said that they lost it. I, and then I let them know of the pattern of a multitude of hospitals and locations that claim that they lost my um, items, but it was on purpose. So it's not to have all these locations. Um, at Presbyterian, my clothes came up missing there too. And then I try I called the police because it kept happening. And then they eventually they wouldn't take the report, but they eventually retrieved my clothes. So I'm just trying to show that someone that is stealing clothes sounds like a jaded ex. Ex. That's not normal for the police department to want to steal your clothes. At multiple different locations. Okay, ma'am. And I've updated everything. I'm sending it to Internal Affairs, and we will begin their the investigation review. Okay, and did, I did communicate okay. with you about the heck phone that they won't investigate my heck phone for five years plus. Was that uh, Detective Mask and Detective Guadar Guadarama? Right, they won't properly okay. investigate it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I have that on there. Okay. Thank you.